Okay. Okay, so today we we you are looking nice like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to, today we move on. I last time we met, I think we looked at regulated environments for of financial reporting. That was part one. While we're actually okay. looking at the regulated environment, the roles and all that. Mostly we are look, yeah. we looked at ISB, we looked at IF, IFRS foundation, we looked quite we looked at harmonization of these uh, accounting standards and why there's need for for nations to harmonize their yeah. the, 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 the accounting standards, uh, global That's harmonization, cool. so to say. So we looked at quite a number of things, but today we still go into this envir uh, uh, regulatory environment. But I will actually focus more on the governance part of it. All right. Okay. So you know, so the main the main body is the I. They're called IAS, right? International Accounting yes. Standards, Standards Board. Board. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sure. in there, you have you have the advisory, you have the interpretation committee. Oh yeah. yes, mm -hmm. I remember that. And then the IOSCO was the one that deals with it. Regular, it, it actually looks at the markets. Okay, stock exchange. Second like stock exchange, yeah. All right. Okay. So we're going to corporate governance. So first thing first, we need to appreciate one thing here, uh, Zara, that uh, Corporate governance has a direct link to the bottom line. When a company is not doing fine, uh, sometimes don't search in many ways, many areas where you think uh, they, are, they are flawed, flawed areas that would actually make a company not generate enough value. Most of the time, don't go very far. What's, you need to do just check on the governance structure. You um, find that the governance structure, if it is not okay, it will actually have a direct link to the performance of the organization. Okay. This is why you need to have a very strong corporate governance structure. So we will first now look at the key underpinning concepts of corporate governance. Yes. Yeah, when we talk about corporate, what it means is basically company. It's like saying company governance. When you talk about governance, what we are saying is how how it is actually run. Yes. So ideally, we are saying how is this company X being run? How is it being managed? That's corporate governance. So the CG, which is corporate governance, is basically how a company is run. Because corporate governance is a system by which organizations are directed and controlled. But we okay. need to know the best practices. What are the CG best practices? What are the corporate governance best practices? For example, you don't need to have in these big companies, you don't need to have a chair who is basically a person who is one person who is a chair and is also a CEO then that becomes a problem. Where I am here, and this is the things that I'll need to explain to my client, he's a CEO mm -hmm. and he's a chair. Already. So even by his door tag, there you see CEO and chair, which I think is a very big problem. But this is when they are starting the company. Again, I, I do understand or appreciate that when a company is still new, you, you, you as a founder of the company, you still want to have a grip. So most of the time you do your chairmanship roles on the board, but and also the CEO. But otherwise, when you're looking at best practice uh, uh, governance principles, you mm -hmm. need to actually separate that. So okay. that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. So corporate governance principles should ensure the company is run in the best interest of its shareholders rather than its directors. Because the shareholders are the owners of the company, so it has to be run as such. Okay.
So the first principle is fairness, mm -hmm. respecting the right and views of any groups with it, legitimate interests. This means a lack of bias. So that's basically what fairness mm -hmm. is, Zara. There is that you don't need to, to be biased. You actually need to look at things in a more, more objective way. Mm -hmm. Not because your subordinate is your relative or is your close associate, then you mm -hmm. can let certain things lose. No, that you would actually be killing the company. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You see, my clients, they know how to serve me well, eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. What do you... Can I also get my cup of tea, please? Please do, please do. Thank please you. Thank you. <laughs> I just made it. I forgot. Secondly, is on the responsibility, willingness to accept liability for the outcome of governance decisions. Do not put a disclaimer after you've come up with a decision, then you say, no, it's not me. Be accountable, be responsible over your governance decisions that you've been making. Mm -hmm. So there must be clarity in the definition of roles and responsibilities. People have to be accountable. Employees need to know what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do. They need to know it's what is true. within their scope. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> yeah. Not where you don't know your roles. No, no, no. Mm. Or someone starts trespassing into your lane. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. My boss, she's constantly asking, how's mm. it going? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> they know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, it's so irritating. Yes. So there should be cautious business and personal behavior. So people need to know their responsibilities, their accountabilities, so that whatever decisions are actually being made or have been made, whether bad or good, people have to be accountable to them. Accountability. Answerable for the consequences of actions. There should be a couch of consequences. In Africa and most African firms, what I've seen, there is no couch of consequences. No. <laughs> People can do wrong things and they will not be held accountable. That's and, true. And that actually kills the business environment. That affects yeah. your bottom line. And that's what it does. It's a big thing. Even, even on a personal level, then it's, it's a culture thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Even personal level people don't want to be accountable for their actions and they don't want to be told the, the truth no uh, so you have to massage things i know zara you're doing fine then by <laughs> the side then i say ah, the way she's doing these things i don't think she's gonna last uh, oh, but yeah. when i'm with you i'll be smiling and telling you all the beautiful nicest things that you'd want to yeah. hear mm -hmm. that's true yeah so providing clarity in communication ch channels with internal and external stakeholders is key. You shouldn't be given, you should be give, you should be given instructions that are not clear. Or that's that when you again you go back to the boss and you ask her or him what he or she meant, they still can't actually start fumbling because they have given you instructions that are not clear. They've given you tasks that they also don't know how best they can be done. That is a problem. So development and maintenance of risk management and control systems is, is quite quite key. You Even when you're coming up with these reports, you need to actually look at what are these vulnerable points that may make this particular report provide very bad signals to decision makers. So you need to look at all these things. Or how can we enrich the report so that it provides a, 
signals that are so important to the growth mm -hmm. of the company. Mm -hmm. Integrity. Account accountancy lies upon the public perception of competence and integrity. It underpins the relationship that an accountant has with our clients, auditors, and other colleagues. So ideally, trust is vital relationships and, and integrity underpins this. You must be a person of uh, a high moral ground. Yeah, as an accountant, because you deal with people's wealth, you deal with people's money, so you need to actually make sure that the public perception on you is good and you have to work towards that. Competence is actually very key. Mm -hmm. People should not be doubting you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Transparency, stroke openness. The board of directors must show clarity not withhold information unless necessary. There should be voluntary disclosure of reliable information. So you're looking at the importance of transparency to a company and its board of directors. There should be things that are very, very cagey because you find yourself in court. If you are not careful, you will actually get imprisoned. You have seen financial advisors to former, should be the former president of South Africa, Mr. What is his name? Jacob Zuma. He was imprisoned, oh, yeah. and that was a financial advisor. So we oh, need to make sure that we have this judicial uh, right, and we have to do the best that is supposed to be done. And also, even when information is given to us, let it be given to us in a more transparent, more open way. Not mm -hmm. where you think maybe it's actually a, a scheme, a Ponzi scheme of some kind. Then you start doubting yourself being free for the next few years. Otherwise, you find yourself in prison. Putting oh, yeah. on a jumper suit. <laughs> so you have to gain trust with investors and authorities and appeal market confidence in the company through truthful and fair reporting helps to manage stakeholder claims. Number six, independence. Mm -hmm. Independence of non-executive directors. There's nothing beautiful on this earth than a person that is an open-minded person with independent views, views that are not encumbered because of um, certain things happening around him or maybe there are kickbacks around. When you receive kickbacks, it becomes very difficult to be very independent, extremely oh, yeah. difficult. Yeah. So independence of the board from operational involvement, independence of directorships from purely personal motivation. So the, the board must, they shouldn't transpass Transpass into the operational uh, environment where they want now to be operational managers. You are, yes, board, yes. You are the board members, be board members. <laughs> reputation, personal reputation for moral visuals. Reputation is very key. You lose it, you lose everything around you. So organization reputation for more, for moral virtues, accountant's profession, reputation for moral virtues. So you're actually looking at your personal reputation, the organization reputation, and also the profession you are in, which is the accountant's profession. There's some reputation that you know, if you do wrong things, even the, 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 the accountant's profession, it's actually going to get dented. We are seeing these scandals coming from the Minister of Finance. We are denting our profession because everybody else that sees us, when you say, when you introduce yourself as an accountant, they think you are actually, your reputation is not of good standing. They think yeah. you are a person that would want to get kickbacks and do all these other things, enrich you yourself. So it becomes oh, yeah. difficult. Yeah, there was a report, I think, a while ago in Zambia, which are those people that... There was no accountability. They didn't produce financial statements for so mm. many years. Mm. Mm. Right? That happened. Was it yes. early this year? Or yes. It, it some early people were fired. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So it does not only uh, injure your individual reputation. It injures the organization. It injures the profession that you represent as you mm. look for bread and butter. <laughs> Then innovation. 
ability of companies to transfer local knowledge and ideas with the new product process that you know, create value. Like I was saying, your reports, you need to enhance them, uh, Zara. They need to be enhanced. They need to be impactful. You can't have a report that means nothing. And religiously, maybe it has been done for over 20 years or 30 years because these are family businesses. And oh, it's yeah. like, it's okay. So you need to come in into that space and be innovative and say, no, I think, yes, as we are doing this, I'm going to do this report in the way you do it, but I'm going to give you an alternative report. Have a look at this report and see whether it actually it is more meaningful than this other report. So oh, you yeah. have to be innovative. That is your job. And that is governance. Okay. Because all in all, all you're trying to do is to create value, and indeed value has to be created. Skepticism. Especially the meaning of professional skepticism, being challenging, scrutinized management by questioning, not just accepting the explanations, accepting the explanations, scrutinize. Your boss, when you're given a task or you're told what to do, scrutinize it in a way. Let it make sense. All that analysis that you've been doing, let that analysis make sense. And not because of a boss when you was up to the stage. Ah, I shouldn't be like that. <laughs> not because your boss has told you. No, 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 no. That's true. Let it make sense. Mm -hmm. Judgment. Taking decisions, enhancing organization's performance. Decisions have to be taken, and, 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 and for, imagine working with a supervisor that cannot make any decision. We are paid to make decisions, and in a way, we are even paid to make wrong decisions that you have actually done with good, in good faith. Oh, yeah. Honest, probit, not just about telling the truth, but also not being guilty of issuing misleading statements. Don't just issue misleading statements. What you don't know, ask. There will always be a, a, an expert among us yourselves on certain topics. Mm -hmm. You have to be truthful. Do not issue misleading statements because misleading statements will lead to misleading uh, decisions that can just take your company down, that can kill the reputation of the company, dent the reputation of the company, distort how clients and the public perceive you as an organization because of misleading statements. Oh, yeah. So we we'll then now go to approaches to corporate governance. Imagine creating such PowerPoints, you create such reports in PowerPoint presentation or management accounts. That's how they are supposed to be created. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward. <laughs> Next, I'll make sure. I'll make sure Tuesday, by to end of day Tuesday, I'm going to um export the trial balance for March. Okay, you should. So the, the, yeah, so that we can start working on the PowerPoint. I mean, I'm not sure yet, but I, in terms of what you're going, but I kind of, I'm excited and I have an idea. I think it will look nice. No, it should look nice. <laughs> not what I, I saw. It I shouldn't know, be done in the UK. Those things shouldn't be like this. <laughs> <it's fine. laughs> that's what I'm always trying, I'm falling asleep. It's so boring. <laughs> it's so boring. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. So, first of all, do I have to download PowerPoint? No, 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 don't worry, we'll do that. Don't worry. You, okay. You, you, you always have PowerPoint. The first report I'll help you. I'll okay. be prepared that that professional with that professional touch. Thank yeah. you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> sure. okay. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Actually, you should even start a financial modeling class with me. If you have yeah. money, just send that money. We are supposed to start at 1330, but unfortunately, I've been called by this client of mine. So I might reschedule it maybe to 19 hours. So there's one person who has paid. I'm excited that. Okay. I need to how start. much? Yeah. How much do you charge? Uh, Four thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, how okay, what's the day today? So how would I send it? Okay, no. Are you doing another one next? How do you do it? Uh, I'm always forced to doing this thing. It has taken long, so this person kept on persisting. But there's another uh, person that is joining. There's another person that is joining. Uh, no, I'm I going to... Hmm. Okay, I'll definitely join. But I was going to say that I'll only, I only, I can only send you that money at the end of the month. Not a problem. You can still join the class. Because otherwise, with those things that you want to start doing, you you will need that skill set. Oh, okay. With those reports yeah, you want to be I need to. I need to. Because we agreed that when I come to Zambia, that's when I'll give you the... Um, other money, mm, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm, so you can you but can you do just that. Send... Okay. Mm? Yeah. So I will reschedule the class. I think it will start maybe at 19 p.m. Uh, I'll just tell the, the uh, gentleman that we'll, we'll start a bit late so that I, I also do my own thing here. Uh, okay. Uh, make a bit of some money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. No, definitely. I promise. I'll at the end uh, of the month sort you out mm, with everything. Mm. For this, so you, yeah, you need that skill set for you to be developing pure, purely beautiful, magical reports. Oh, great! Mm. Yeah, that should mm. be good. Not if you're able to cheat, I've never done work. I know, but you know what? And once I know this skill set, when I move to the next job, actually, I'll probably be, I'll probably get good. I mean, it will be a step up. Yeah, definitely. Too well. And I'll be more competitive and they'll want, they'll want me. And yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll pimp you. I'll mind. pimp you. You'll be pimped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> mm -hmm. So with it, now we go on to the uh, two possible systems for trying to get oh. governments to have good corporate governance. One is rules-based. Even in homes, you have who? Homes which are rules based. We saw it when we were oh, growing yeah. up in the neighborhood. Even some of us, we lived in homes which was full of rules, do's oh, yeah. and don'ts. Then there are some homes which is the principle based, where you say, no, it's, it is, there are no rules. Uh, com comply or explain. If you don't want to comply, this explain why you have done what you have done. But in oh, some yeah. homes, it's a rules based. You have to do it. If you don't do it, then you are in for it. Okay. I'm so, so like in the UK, in the U in the UK, it's principle based. Comply or explain. Oh. In the US, they have adopted rules based. You have to follow the rules. And oh. maybe it's understood why it is like that because USA is a home of lawyers. UK is a home oh, yeah. of accountants. Yeah. Hey, yeah, the US, everyone is suing everyone. Yeah, yes. literally. And maybe that's a disadvantage of having rules based. It becomes litigious. You, you have an oh, environment yeah. where you have created these rules. Anyone who has gone against those rules has to be sued. So the, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because here in this country, there's no that culture that they have in America of being sued is basically it's not really there. And sometimes it annoys me because you think people get away with things mm -hmm. and provide rubbish customers. For instance, never just customer service compared to America, because they know that they'll be sued if they don't provide that service. Mm -hmm. So that is rules based. Yours is principles based. So what are oh. the advantages of rules based? One, there's clarity. You will know that if you don't do it correctly, you will be sued. Oh, yeah. Standardization. Penalties, whether you go uh, through the, the channels of uh, the legal system and you have found one thing, there will be penalties, which have become more a deterrent against bad corporate governance. Easier compliance with the rules as they are uh, an ambiguous and can be evidenced. Okay. So, even in a home which has rules, you even know that if you go home after 19 hours or, or 9 p.m., whatever it is, you find the gate is locked. No and one is going to uh, open. 
for you. Oh, yeah. And in, even in homes, I think when we were growing up, there were some elements which are actually rules based in these homes. If you if you you miss lunch, even by 10 minutes, count yourself out. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. My mom did that, especially to my brothers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. He won't eat. <laughs> no food. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we go to rules based, <laughs> uh, the disadvantages of having rules. Like we said, we saw it in homes where, and mostly where, the, where it was rules based. A home for very maybe pastors or preachers. There were a lot of rules. And look at what came out of their children, most of them. <laughs> then I they know. become true ones. <laughs> yeah. I know my neighbor. Serious. <laughs> my neighbors, the, you would even think like they used to say, you see, those are satanic children. The parents yeah. just came. Yeah. And my yeah. friends, when they were so strict, they would come to my house, listen to certain music. Ah, mm. when they were teenagers, it was the total opposite. Mm. Mm. And yet, and, they... <laughs> and oh, that's yeah. how it works. That's how it works. An environment where you said, "Don't do this, don't do this," a normal human mind would say, ah, "If maybe I can try, let me do it." You see, oh, yeah. Let me. yeah. So, what are the disadvantages of having a rules-based system or adopting a rules-based? Can create just a box ticking approach. All you are doing is just it. Oh, ticking. Checking. Yeah. Just ticking. Oh, okay, this. Blah, 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 blah. You stop thinking. You stop being innovative because you're just following rules. Whether they're right or wrong, whether they've been tested over a long time, no one is challenging the rules. You continue with them, even when they do not make sense. Oh, yeah. It's not suitable to all possible situations. Because creating rules, you will need to look at all possible scenarios. But it's not possible. So some certain situations may not require these rules-based principles. Okay. It creates a necessary administration burden on some companies because they're following rules, even when it does not make sense. Instead of you just ignoring the rules and doing what you think is best, then given you given an opportunity to explain why you have done what you have done. Oh, yeah. One size does not necessarily fit all. So because there will be different scenarios, different permutations, which possibly those rules never looked at. It can become expensive. Mm -hmm. And that become expensive. You have these legal suits, you have all these other things. Oh, yeah. So then now we go to the principles base. So principles based system, like we said, right. comply. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm just saying like that, the scrabble. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So comply or explain. Mm -hmm. And you have seen in some homes, so-called liberal homes, that is what they use. We are not going to fix uh, some rules for you as, as our children, but know what is right. Let's follow principles. And if something does not make sense, explain why you have done what you have done. If you don't want to comply to this. So in the principles system, companies adhere to the spirit of the rule or explain why it hasn't been done. I'll give this example. And I see it so many times <laughs> in uh, these organizations or meetings that we normally have. You meet for a meeting, interdepartmental meeting, you are 10 of, of you from different de departments. You know each other. But then the chairman will say, can you introduce yourselves? 
And you go on, you say, no, um, Kapepe, Kapepe, I'm Fitzpatrick, Kapepe, I'm bra, 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 this, this one goes, no, me, I'm Tony Montana, bra, 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 this. They're just wasting time. <laughs> just wasting time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Get to yeah. know each other, just start the meeting and move on. Well, this is people <laughs> you work with. Yeah, but they're different departments. But all just one just says, I don't care, introduce yourself here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this does not mean the company has a choice not to adhere. You adhere. Oh, but yeah. if, you don't, if you intend not to, explain why you haven't done that. It just it just means it can temporarily explain why it has not been done. Okay. So the punishment for this non-adherence will be judged by investors. Yes. And that's principles based. What are the advantages? Not so rigidly allows for different circumstances. It also allows companies to go beyond the minimum required. The problem with, with the rules based, you only your obligation is just to meet the requirements of that particular rule. Oh yeah. But principles based, so often you go beyond the minimum required. It's less of an admin uh, burden. Can only can develop own specific corporate governance and internal controls. For example, fiscal controls over cash, we buy to some businesses and less relevant or not applicable to others. So it just gives you that opportunity. And these you can marry them to just a normal home, a normal family, a family that uses rules and the other one that actually uses principles. The same advantage you are going to find there, the advantage you are going to find here, the disadvantages are the same disadvantages you are going to find. Okay. Disadvantages, one of them could actually be also just misinterpreted, misinterpreted or you misdiagonize because there are no rules. So oh, the yeah. principles are so broad that they are of very little use as a guide to best proprietary government practice or governance. Not easier compliance as with the rules, as they are ambiguous and cannot be evidenced. So principles versus rules, this is just a bit deeper. So we're saying rules-based control is when behavior is underpinned and prescribed by statute of the country's legislature. I think you gave an example of the US, eh, where most of these things, you find that they are taking each other to courts because mm -hmm. they are, these are part of their legislations or pieces of law. You go against them, you find yourself uh, before a judge. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Yeah. You know, when I was there, even yeah. when you go to the hairdresser and you ask them mm -hmm. to cut your hair, you sign a contract and you have to say how many inches. Mm -hmm. And if the hairdresser goes beyond that, you can sue them. Mm -hmm. So when they're doing your hair or putting chemicals, you sign a contract. There's mm -hmm. paperwork. <laughs> and this is why they are talking about these things. Yeah. Where is it? Sorry. This. Great and necessary. Oh, yes. Burden on administrative burden because you have to the right people have to, to sign yeah. and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Very necessary. Oh, yeah, completely. Mm hmm. So compliance is required under stock market listing rules, but non-compliance is allowed based on the premise of full disclosure of all areas of non-compliance. <laughs> so stock market listing rules, so there will be all these compliance issues that will be required. Mm -hmm. Then basically it is then up to the market to judge how good or bad the non-compliance is. So if you look at the UK, 
comply with explain disclosure in the UK describe minor or temporary non-compliance. Comply or you explain? Mm -hmm. So on rules base, is when behavior is underpinned and prescribed by statute of the country's legislature, we have looked at this. Compliance is therefore enforceable in law such that companies can face legal action if they fail to comply. You just gave an example of a hairdresser and what contract you have to sign before you, you before she works on, on your on your beauty. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, <laughs> listed companies are required to comply in detail. They can also prove very expensive. Like we said, just becomes administratively expensive. Uh, it's a pain, a very big pain, uh, when you follow these rules. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the SEMA ethics code, which is based on okay. principles. So advantages of using principles. This is a much a much. Look. <laughs> oh, Advant oh. Advantages of using principles. Yeah. Makes the user think about ethics rather than just a list of rules, isn't it? Well, yeah. If you are using principles, you know what is right, you know what is wrong. So your conscience oh. guides you. Mm -hmm. Stops oh. people finding loopholes to the laws. Because if you are using the, the laws, the pieces of legislation, legislation, you all you'll be looking at is how can you beat those those <laughs> pieces of laws? Oh, yeah. And naturally, like I said, because it's rules-based, you are told do not do this. Then you start doing the opposite, you'll find loopholes. Oh yes. So it can be used in many situations because it's principles, it can contain certain rules where principles are not enough. And also just basically shows the minimum standards that you require. And most of the time, you'll go above those minimum standards. The disadvantages of using principles need a very good understanding of the principles. You need to understand those principles. Doesn't take into account regional and cultural differences because of the difference, differences in culture that may actually uh, injure your, your principles. Oh, yeah. You know, this the rules based where you believe that, oh, we're in a country, it's a, it's a Christian nation, and you're in a meeting with people from different regions of the world. You have Muslims, you have Hindus there, then you say, let's, let's pray. Oh, yeah. It's because you, we have, you think it's a rule that you, each meeting you have to pray. But you forget that these people that you are in this meeting with, and possibly you are looking for money from these particular people, maybe from the Saudis, and you want now to actually use those rules, those rules or they laws or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. When they That's themselves, they respect you whenever you go to their place. So don't say, guys, let's now start. Oh, yeah. So you're becoming cultural insensitive because oh, yeah. you are not taking into account the cultural differences that you have with those people that you are supposed to have meetings with or you are yet to have a meeting with. So is that the, principles, disadvantages hmm? of principles? Yes, yes, it's the disadvantage of using principles. Mm. Well, so I, I think don't take into account because, yeah, yeah, because obviously for the laws, because here, you have these certain principles, certain principles oh, that you yes. use, right? Oh, yes. But these principles may actually, may not interact well with oh, the yes. certain think... elements because these principles may be blind to regional and cultural differences. So, you know, rules, rules are enforceable, but principles yes. aren't. Are not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, difficult to legally enforce, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Diversity on the boards of directors. For me, I've always argued that in life, 
if you want to build a very good business empire or any other empire, encourage diversity. So diversity is very, very important because you have people coming from different cultural backgrounds. They have different belief systems. If you can harmonize that, it's a powerful tool that would actually help the organization generate more value. So a board, you should at least at minimum, you should have fair representation from different sexes, races, from different backgrounds. So, And this is what we'll be looking at. What's the beauty of having diversity? Oh, yeah. You cannot all just come from one region and you come up with something. No, you cannot come from one country and you have all these things. Look at your company. You have different people coming from East Europe, blah, 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 and all these other things. And that's the beauty of diversity. Oh, yeah. Means having a range of many people that are different from each other. You don't just need to work with people that are like you. No. I've always even said it. Never work with people that you like. <laughs> Sometimes work with people that you don't like. Sometimes work with people that don't like you. Because you have no control over what they like and what they don't like. But if you see any good from it, you can create a powerful tool. Oh, yeah. Would, generate value for the company. Look at factors like age, race, gender, educational background, and professional qualifications of the directors to make the board less homogeneous. It should not be the same. One there, Yeah. Implement. On board. So in implementing policies on board diversity, both the company's chairman and the nomination committee plays in control. So the chairman being the leader of the board has to facilitate new members joining the team, has to also look at the skill sets, broad the skill sets lacking in that, on that particular board that needs to be onboarded, so to say. And to encourage open discussions and exchanges of information during formal and informal meetings. I'm a great believer, Zara, of informal meetings. So what mostly I do before having a formal meeting, maybe with external stakeholders, I always encourage that first we have a one-to-one -one talk. Okay. With them. So that one-to-one -one talk, we look at the common areas of um, controversy, not in a formal setup, because in the formal setup and unfortunately the formal meetings, it's them versus you. Oh, yes. But in an informal one, where you said you're joking or whatever, no one is taking minutes, you, you tend to bring out the best. Then oh. afterwards, you can now arrange a formal meeting. You'd have cleared most of all these things that are actually linked to ego, for example. Uh, yeah, that's so true, actually. Yeah. And that's the beauty about it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, legal counsel, how are you? Very yeah, good. I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. So the nomination committee should give consideration diversity and establish a formal recruit recruitment policy. You need different people to sit on board, like I said, because diversity is good. You are able to see it in a French national team, how successful a company can be if you encourage diversity. Mm -hmm. People from different backgrounds, they need and they create magic. Mm -hmm. So benefits of both diversity, more effective decision making, better utilization of the talent pool, enhancement of corporate reputation and investor relations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. The fundamental principles. These are the fundamental principles. Same as ethical guidelines. 
which we have been explained here and there. Ethics will always be the same. They'll just be tweaked here and there. But generally, they are just the same. Mm -hmm. So despite being aimed at accountants, these guidelines are also equally relevant to an employee or employee. manager, mm -hmm. or just a mere person on the streets. Mm -hmm. So the end of the CIMA code of ethics, one, to identify the nature of the personal responsibility, provide guidance on how to identify the practical situations, provide general guidance on how to address those difficult questions. It's the same thing. Oh, yeah. What are the five fundamental principles? One is integrity, objectivity, professional competence and due care, confidentiality, and professional behavior. Ethical conflicts. These are things that happen in day-to-day -day running, especially if you have um, that, if you are buying an office that is vulnerable to, to corruption and the like. You need to right. actually look at these things. Should I think about dollars or should I think of doing the correct thing? <laughs> and they find you when you are at the most vulnerable point of your life. Oh, yeah. Maybe your parent is sick in the village. Oh, yeah. And all that. Then someone brings dollars. So you need to look at all these things. So oh, yeah. there can be pressure from an overbearing supervisor, pressure from a friend or relation. And all these things. So these are ethical conflicts or dilemmas that you need to sort out. Right. Yeah. So there are threats here. I had to put XXX. I didn't want to insult. But you are able to see what those acronyms are. Uh, right. You get caught <laughs> doing any of these. So <laughs> you have what focus there. Being seen to act on, on behalf of your client as opposed to the independent team. Instead of you being independent, you are actually advocating for your clients because maybe you've got some kickbacks, self-interest, acting in your own best interest instead of being objective, mm -hmm. self-review, losing objectivity by reviewing your own work, intimidation, not acting ethically because you are being intimidated by someone, familiarity, losing independence as we are too close to the subject or person. So now you are able to see this. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So that's an acronym. Like I said, it's a bit crude. So I, I had to put the XXX, but yourself, you can do that on your own. Okay. You're overthinking. Let's move on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm guessing. Oh, okay. yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> I okay. couldn't. I didn't have. I didn't have the courage to put it. Okay. No, I'm just. I'm just. What is it? Okay. I'm just seeing it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so safeguards against these threats. One, be professional. This is why continuous professional developments are very important. The CPDs uh, create the right environment. Individual ethics comply with professional standards. We need to be mentored, if in doubt, whistleblowing, and all these other things. Oh, yeah. Examples on advocate threat, the audit firm giving evidence in court on behalf of the client, recruiting senior management for, for the client, and you're being biased. Examples of um, safeguards, it's better you rotate senior assurance teams, personnel. So now yeah. if it's an audit firm, you rotate them so that because familiarity oh, yeah. is a lot of contact. Them different, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Discussing ethical issues, those charged with governance of the client, if it's in an, uh, you, you lead the department, talk about these ethical issues once in a while whenever you're having meetings. Getting another firm to perform part of the engagement is a part of uh, self-guards. Mm -hmm. We, have, we already looked at the code of ethics, which is confidentiality, really? objectivity, professional skill and due care, professional behavior and integrity. Mm -hmm. These are just examples. Mm -hmm. You know enough about tax to carry out your daily work, but you are not an expert. Then you want to give an opinion when in actual fact, you know people around you who are experts in tax. Why not oh, yeah. just say, okay, give me time, I go and read research. Or better still, you refer them to the best talent 
who will be able to advise them properly. Mm -hmm. How should an accountant use this code? They identify threats they may face to these principles. See if the threat is significant. Use safeguards to reduce the threat. That's how you can do it. Some of the examples, a qualified accountant holds a number of shares in his employee company and has become eligible for profit-related bonuses for the first time. What type of threat could this represent to his objectivity and prepare the company's financial study? The threat is self-interest because he knows he'll be getting bonuses. He's the one who's preparing this. So he might be vulnerable to manipulate the documents. Oh, yeah. Therefore, the auditor may not act to the objectivity and independence. If such threats are significant, the interest is direct and of high value. So safeguards will have to be put in place. So the accountant should disclose confidential information when authorized by the client, when required by law, to protect the professional interests of an accountant in a legal action. Like I've said, there's a reputation, individual reputation, there's a reputation that actually bears on your organization. So well, you need to look at all these things. And that's okay. it for, for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So check out time. Check out time. Uh, let me hear from you before we <laughs> okay. finally close um, the session. Yes, today's lesson was very informative as usual. Very well explained. You always make it interesting. And I love how you give real life examples because sometimes just learning the theory is boring and you tend to kind of go off and probably doesn't get in. And I mean, from the discussions that we have or what you explained to me, a lot goes in and I'm able to understand and I find it interesting. And it gives me a better perspective of how companies should be run. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is one topic I really <laughs> thought would be so boring, mm -hmm. but it's in, it's amazing how you've made it so interesting and so easy to understand and actually make sense of it to say as an accountant, this is how these things work. This is how companies are run. Even just how you've explained corporate governance, to be honest, I've really mm -hmm. understood it properly for the first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you again. Okay. <laughs> I'm always looking forward to our lessons. <laughs> yeah. So tomorrow I'm sure we'll start around the same time, isn't it? Okay. Yes, it's a holiday. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sure. Maybe 10, 10 30, I don't know. Okay, 10 30 your time. Mm. Yeah, that's fine. Mm. Okay. That's fine. So then what I'm going to do, I'll I'll give this person that wants to start financial modeling your number so that we come up with okay. a, a WhatsApp group. Okay, good. Okay, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, then maybe yes. later in the evening we can have the first class. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'll go and buy a book. Yeah, please. <laughs> and a book for notes. Yeah. You need oh, to no, be a guru. So I'll, I'll, pimp, I'll pimp you. I'll pimp you. Yeah, it's Excel, but you need to write some few things here and there. Oh, yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. And there's something, I mean, not now, but there's something I want to show you. It's called the cash suspense. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's the cash book, the money that we receive in the bank and what the customers pay. Mm -hmm. So we have to, I export the information in the other system, what the customers mm -hmm. pay. And I have to match it up, obviously, with what's in the bank. Mm -hmm. But that's Excel spreadsheet. I think I need to show you because mm -hmm. I'm trying to find an easier way of matching the transactions because there are a lot throughout the month. Not a problem. So you will learn those skill, skill sets. Okay, uh, good. And you'll be doing okay. your work in a very smart way. Okay, like good. I said, I'll thank you. That's it. Thank <laughs> you. <A> commitment. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. And bye-bye, Zap. Take care, Sim. Bye. Bye. Yeah. bye.